who's watching me. meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. second. Motion's been made and second to approve the minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? You have before you a copy of the treasurer's report. Do I hear a motion that we accept the treasurer's report? Make a motion to accept the I second. Motion's been made and second to accept the treasurer's report. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? You have a copy of the appropriations analysis. Do I hear a motion to approve the appropriations analysis? Second. Thank you. Motion's been made and second to approve the appropriations analysis. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? County Road and Equipment Report. Uh, the auction was held at the County Yard, which was a huge success. We uh, appreciate uh, Sheriff Emberton. Uh, we were able to coordinate that together, make one run in the paper, and have one big auction, and it was great. The Bush Hog you guys approved last month was delivered yesterday, and we can't wait to get that thing out and operating because everything is just blowing up on us. We need to do some mowing. Uh, the bid process is complete for the stropping of some paved roads in the county and look for that to occur at some point next month. Uh, we're going to stripe Burnt Ridge Road, uh, the new road, the Scotland Formosa Road, East Mountain Road, Graceville Cutoff Road, uh, Highway 389 over at Scotland and Highway 16 Loop. We also have some projects which are going to be completed as soon as possible. Old Highway Number 9 has a drainage and low water crossing project. Dean Road has a low water crossing project. Uh, Lakeview Road, Rabbit Ridge Road, the historic train bridge at Shirley, and several other small ones, uh, very small uh, in scale uh, projects. Some of our JPs have come and, and toured the Rock Crusher. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed going out there. I certainly enjoyed showing it to you. It was uh, really nice. Any questions for me? Thank you. Uh, Sheriff Emerton? I did hand your packet out. We'll go through it. I have a few little things I want to touch on, maybe point out. The deputies are still busy, if you can't tell. Uh, but unfortunately, We'll get to some of that information in just a minute. On the top there, we put in the lawn maintenance. This is the this is the labor exchange that we're doing with the county judge. This kind of keeps us a rundown of what equipment we're using and the amount of personnel and the amount of hours. If you have any questions on that, just let me know. I just want to keep up, uh, everybody to keep up with what's going on with them. Uh, the next one's our patrol log activity. And at the bottom, we noted that uh, as y'all will know, we had two officers on administration leave uh, last month for most of the month. And also we had our three SROs are getting a well-deserved rest for a little bit. Um, so our numbers looks like we're down just a little bit as far as total contacts. But if you'll go up and match the numbers of, of uh, the calls that they've taken, as they have been staying really close. It's just we were down some, uh, some deputies. That. Our CID log, uh, it's also remaining really close, uh, staying the same since April. 
looking at a total of 443 uh, cases. Those guys are staying on top of those and continuing to uh, turn in their affidavits and assisting the, uh, the deputies with the, the calls and cases that they come in with the evidence that they need and turn that over to the prosecutor. Our next one is animal control law. Also, I believe he's, he's got his uh, all we're here today totals. We're, we're kind of changing that up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read so that you guys can just follow that across the uh, The detention center law. Uh, on the next one is our intake, total intake from the different agencies. Uh, we are trying to keep our med inmate total as full at full capacity as well as we can. Uh, and right now we're at uh, this last month we stayed at 19 it looks like so uh, looks like we've done very well there to keep them there. Uh, the last page there is going to be our log to uh, other agencies where we house our inmates and that's the ones that been built and received as we can keep up with that. Um, a couple of things on our jail advisory board. We've had Tracy, three or four meetings now. Three. We've had three meetings now. We're, we're on average of about seven, seven members showing up for right now. Uh, we did have a couple that showed up our first meeting and that was I think it kind of I think it was just a little bit too much for them to, that they wanted to deal with and which is understandable because it's a very big decision to make or, or recommendation um, so if anyone does have anyone that would be interested in serving on that we would most likely uh, appreciate that you know we, we need as many people on that advisory board a lot of eyes on numbers and a lot of eyes on, on, our, on our layout of the jail and exactly what do we need to do that would be best for our county and be able to uh, accommodate for our population. Uh, so if you know of anybody else, if you've already given us two people, if you've got somebody else, we'll take somebody else. It doesn't just have to be two people. If you have somebody else that would be interested in something like that, we'd be interested in, in talking to them visit with us on that. Um, we are working on me and Deb, we're working on uh, mostly Deb. But she's working on another form of income for us. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, we worked on it until we come up here this afternoon. And she's getting us set up back on the SSI program where we're an SSI reporter. So you get rewarded for reporting that. If somebody comes to our facility, we report them back to SSI if they choose to kick them out of the system since they got incarcerated, then we get rewarded for being that reporter for those inmates. Instead of that check continuing to go to the family or continuing to go somewhere else and those checks are not being used for that individual, then they kick that out. We get a reward for it. So it's possible more revenue than we have. Something that they stopped doing in 2013. So we're going to pick that back up. Uh, appreciation to John Bradford for uh, bringing that to our attention. And we took it and ran with it. And we're, we're right on the line of getting all that figured out. We're working on it right now. So next couple of weeks, we should be back up to part of that. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or department heads? any of the elected officials or department heads that are here. Okay. Next on the agenda is Dale Schulte, Department of Veteran Affairs Suicide Prevention Program. Are they here? Okay. Takes us right along to new business and our first ordinance, which is sponsored by Justice Holt. Being enacted by the Court of the County of Vanderbilt, they want to an ordinance to be entitled 
an ordinance to reduce the rate of pay of jurors or someone that appeared for orientation in Governor County, whereas Governor County is under financial strain, whereas there is a need to reduce the rate of pay for jurors or someone and appear at orientation to the mandatory uh, minimum rate of $15 per day, and whereas the mandatory rate of $50 per day will remain for those who serve on the jury, and whereas the ordinance complies with the provisions of ACA 16-34, dash 103 dash 106 and shall be effective upon passage. Now therefore be it ordained by the court of Fort Bangor County, Arkansas, that section one, the pay rate for jurors attending orientation will be reduced to the minimum rate of $15 per day. Section two, the mandatory rate of $50 per day for jurors serving will remain the same. This ordinance will be in effect upon passage. I move to approve this ordinance. Second. This motion has been approved and second. This is also, or this uh, ordinance has been approved and second. This ordinance is one that will require three readings. Uh, if you choose to have all three readings uh, occur at this time, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules for the purpose of conducting all three readings at this time. Uh, the next two being by title only. I would like to suspend the rules for the second motion and second to suspend the rules to conduct the next two readings at this time by title only. No call vote for suspension. Paul? Yes. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Bass? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Justice Holt, will you read the second time, please, by title only? Be it enacted by the court court of the county of Van Buren, state of Arkansas, in order to be entitled an ordinance to reduce the rate of pay of jurors who are summoned and appear for orientation in Bandera County. Thank you. And the third and final reading. Being enacted by the court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled, an ordinance to reduce the rate of pay of jurors who are summoned and appear for orientation in Bandera County. Thank you. Any discussion? Where, which budget is it? This is like, is there a certain line item? There's a chair, line item. Judge's budget? Um, yeah, it's in Judge Foster's budget, the jury line, I think, it's in Judge Foster's. What's the purpose for this? Save money. Save money. Because to save money. And it was previous, how much? 25. 25. So it's $10. Any other discussion? Questions? Roll call vote. Yes. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Max? Yes. 2019-30. Thank you. Our next ordinance will be uh, sponsored in red by Justice Taylor. Been enacted by the Quorum Court of County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, appropriation ordinance to be entitled an appropriation ordinance to appropriate $238.88 into the County General Sheriff's Department budget, number 1,000-400, and $250 into the Detention Center budget, number 1,000-418. Whereas there has been donations to the Sheriff's Department for the K-9 unit totaling $238.88, and whereas the Choctaw Volunteer Fire Department has paid $250 to the Detention Center for lawn care. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Quorum Court, Bangor County, Arkansas, that Section 1, $238.88 be appropriated into the Sheriff's Department budget, number 1,400-3104, K-9 donations. Section 2, $250 be appropriated into the Detention Center budget, number 1,418-2002, small equipment. I move we pass it. Open discussion. Roll call vote. Holt? Yes. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Emmings? Yes. Bass? Yes. 2019-31. Thank you. Uh, the next ordinance is also sponsored by Justice Holt. Be it enacted by the full court of Canada and here in the state of Arkansas, an appropriate notice to be entitled. An appropriate notice to amend the original appropriation ordinance 20 2019 59, 
the annual operating budget for 2019 to increase the projected revenue and appropriate $90,000 into the county general fund 1000-804-3102 to be transferred into the circuit clerk reporter's cost fund 3006-102 as needed. Whereas monies have not come into the circuit clerk reporter's cost fund as expected, and where the fund is running low will not be enough to make it to the end of the year. Whereas $40,000 of the $90,000 will need to be transferred into the circuit clerk report cost fund 3006-102-1001 as slash these salaries after the passage of this ordinance. Now therefore be it ordained by the court report of the Mayor County of Arkansas that section one ninety thousand dollars be appropriated into County Journal 1804-3102 be transferred in the circuit clerk reporter's cost fund 2006-102 as needed. Section 2, 40,000 of the 90,000 be transferred into the circuit clerk reporter's cost fund budget 3006-102-1001 F slash D salaries at the passage of this ordinance. We're going to move for adoption on this ordinance, so I hear a second. Okay. Discussion? I've got some questions. Okay. This recorder's car fund. I noticed there were 26,000. 264827 in the hole, right? I got some questions because I don't even know we can, if we can do what this woman says. Let me read to you what the statute says on the recorder's cost fund. A uniform fee to be charged by the recorders in the various counties in the state shall be as follows. I'm sorry, I got my notice to you. For recording deeds, deeds of trust, mortgages, release deeds, power of attorney, plans, surveys, no refunds, foreign judgment, materials liens, and other uh, recordable instruments, except as otherwise prescribed in this section, $15 for one page, one side only, and $5 for each additional page. For recording mortgages, mortgages assignments, mortgages release, re-releases, and other instruments, multiple <coughs> instruments are listed in a single document, an additional fee of $15 per instrument listed, uh, uh, listed not to exceed $300 shall be charged, and $8 for filing or recording a certificate of assessment or any other instrument not specified in this subsection. If the recorder waives the requirements of 1415 or any for good cause, the instrument may be recorded for additional additional fee of twenty-five dollars. Now listen to this: all fees collected under this section shall be paid into the county treasury to the credit of the fund to be known as the recorder's cost fund. Monies deposited in this fund shall be appropriated and expended for the use that uses designated in this section on court at the direction of the recorder. Appropriated money shall be placed into line items within the recorder's budgets as approved by the court. All monies collected by the recorder as a fee as provided in this section shall be used by the recorder's office to offset administrative costs. At least 25% of the monies collected annually shall be used to purchase, maintain, and operate an automated system, recorded record system. The acquisition and update of software for the automated record system shall be, per be permitted use of these funds. At the discretion, discretion of the recorder, any funds not needed for the recorder for any of the other personal purposes under this subsection, uh, C, paragraph 2, may be transferred to the county general fund funds in excess of $1 million held at any time in the county recorder's cost fund shall be transferred to the county general fund. Okay. 
specifies in the statute what monies can be put in that fund. You're wanting to take from general fund and put into that recorder's cost fund, which is not specified in here. This fund was started in 95, 1995, for this sole purpose right here. Quorum courts would not be over the offices, the money they needed to run their office. So they set aside this fund from these recordings. Only the monies collected from these recordings are supposed to go in this recorder's cost fund. When I went out of office two years ago, in that recorder's cost fund was $141,000. Now we're $26,000 in the hole. Nothing in there for automation. The statute specifically says at least 25% of those monies collected must be used in automation. Can I respond to that? Oh, are you, are you, or do you still have some? I still have some. Okay, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. I understand that back a few years ago, the clerk decided that she wanted to pay all payroll. That's not specified in this, or of this statute. The money has to be spent on, on the, uh, the stuff in the recorder's office. Uh, it's not supposed to be used on paper. I don't know how we got here. 30 years, we've done it the correct way. Ricky was in there 14 years. I was in there 16. We had plenty of money to work. I never had to come to the, to the court, court to ask money except one time. <coughs> and Dale, you were in here then. I came and asked for $15,000 to be able to set up a record system so that we could deal with the gas and oil. You may have been here too, Dale. Remember that. I paid back from that 15000 into that fund after I had done the automation $110,000 plus $50,000 a month went into the coffers to because of those 10 machines that we leased out to the gas company. I realize the gas companies are gone, but two years ago I had 100, I laid down the key with $141,000 and now we're what, $167,000 spent. I want to know where that money went to. You can't pay payroll out of the reporter's cost fund because that's not designated in the statute. can't add two from general fund to the recorder's cost fund because that comes from those monies collected by the recorder. We don't have the authority to add two from general fund to that. Now whatever we did back in two or three years ago has got us in a pickle. The only thing I can see is that we're going to have to go back in and revamp that thing and, and we can't take payroll out of the course cost fund because that's not what it's designed to do. Okay. As far as the 25% automation, we do pay for our software programs, we pay for other stuff that I think falls under that automation. We did this um, when I came into office in 2017 because the purpose of it was to try to save County General some money, to not solely be ran out of County General. We, we started this, we all, those of you that are already here, we discussed this. We don't know if it's going to work. We want to give it a shot. If it works for a couple of years or 10 years, great. I'm not the only county that does this. so. If we're doing it wrong, then a bunch of other people in the state are doing it wrong too. You're not doing it wrong. Esther, I, I gave you your time, please. Mind. I um, I don't think we've done anything wrong. Now, how it was before, which when we spoke in the budget meeting, how we want to go back is putting 75% of what's collected back in the general and let's get 25% in my office to use for the automation stuff. And the payroll go back in. Like it has been for years. 
that's what I'm proposing. We just discuss that. Um, I wish it would have worked. I have told y'all all along. Wish it would have worked. We have not added anything to our office. We've lost one and a half employees. We haven't added any, anything to our office new, money-wise. Any furniture or computers we have bought have come out of some of my other funds. They have not come out of general, and I believe maybe one thing come out of my reporting cost because we have the money there and it wasn't being used and we needed this money. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know about, I don't know why it would matter going back into general and moving the money from general. I know it doesn't say that and I understand what you're saying, but I believe Ms. Cruz would be the one to tell us legally if that's something we could do. I'm putting her on the spot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> so I hear what the statute says, and I didn't, this is the first I've heard of this, so I haven't okay. had time to research it or read any questions or anything. And when I heard what you read, um, I, so it sounds like that lays out specifically what money can go in there. I don't know, we might need to do a little research to see if that prohibits any of the moving of anything from county general. I know that's what Mr. Bax seems to think that it says, but I would want some time to make sure uh, that's that's a pretty major decision to make. So I would want some time well, to make sure that's what it is. We used to have a payroll, but, and then we had to make Things I would be in that office mm -hmm. and and be, be done on the the uh, deed books and everything out of that fund. It didn't cost the county anything, but now we're in the hole. We don't have twenty five percent to do automation. Sure, but you're. But I think I heard you say that you think it's in violation of the statute to move the money. To move the money from county general because it specifically states where that recorder's cost fund is to come from. If you want to move it into a a payroll account, that's a different thing. But you can't. I don't. I don't see how you can move it because it specifically states from these things here that money is to be collected from those rents. Yeah. They are collected from that. But, but I'm not sure, them. I'm not sure that just because it gives, um, the statute provides where the money should come from, it means that, you, that it's illegal to move it from county general in addition to where the money, where that money can come from. That's the part that I think we're, I, I didn't hear the statute say that, but I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I, I wouldn't want to give an opinion on the spot. Um, without having time to see other counties do this way, that there will be some authority for that. So we should, if it is prohibited. I have talked to several of the counties. Um, of course, Faulkner County, they're quite a bit bigger than we are. Um, they take all their reporting stuff out of their reporting budget, all the report stuff out of their report budget. Of course, we're not as big as they are. We don't have the money for all they have, so that won't work for us. I talked to, um, Crawford County, of course, they're a lot bigger than we are too. They completely run out of their reporting. They, you know, um, Faulkner County gives nothing to general. They don't even give 75% like we have always done in the past to general. They keep it all and they run on it. But of course, they pull in a lot more money a month on reporting than we do. I talked to Cleveland County clerk. She did the same thing I did. We come in and try to run our office out of our reporting budget to stay out of county general as much as possible. She has since ran into something I ran into. Having the money's not coming in like it should be. We're having to turn payroll back over to county general. So she's in the same predicament we are. But I do believe that, uh, and we, the treasurer and I have talked about this, and it's not Misty's fault, I'm not blaming Misty by no means, but I believe that my projection, my projected income was set too high. And I think that's what started this people. And then we had three payrolls in a month from the back and multiple things. And plus the money has not been coming in. Now, one day this week, we did over $2,000. We haven't done that well since the first of the year. So it's gonna, it fluctuates. You can't control mortgages and deeds. I mean, you just can't control them. When they come in, they come in. So it fluctuates, and I do believe we are gonna go up some by the end of the year. I hope we do, I foresee it. Can't promise it, but 
I mean, we're not in this pickle for any wrong movies. I don't like I think it's just they're just what it is. And we just got to fix it. Well, and that's what the purpose was. And it worked for two years, but. And we have discussed I mean, this is a fix. And then at the beginning of the year, going back to the old system. Yes. Where it was separated the yes. way that it used to be. Yes. The county general was in the payroll. Yes. yes. It really hasn't worked because you went from 141,000, now you're 167,000. Well, I can promise you it's and only because so of they don't have any money, so it hadn't worked. We drained the pot dry, and, and there's nothing there. There's nothing there for automation. And I said it didn't work. We tried it. It didn't work. And what we were doing was trying to run the office to stay out of county general because our county has been in such a financial distress. At the time, it was a good idea. And I think the people that were on the phone at that time agreed with me. We wouldn't have done it. Well, that paragraph B sums that up at the discretion of the court. Any funds not needed by the court for any of the purposes under the subdivision C2, which is the 25%, uh, may be transferred to the county. <coughs> the thing of it is, now we're at the point you need it. You don't have it, and you need it. Yes. So, exactly right. this, this is going to have to, you're, we're going to have to change this up, and I don't know. I don't know how we can do it this year, but in budget meetings we need to straighten this out and have a, a not take payroll out of the reporters cost fund because it will not. It never was able to supplement that. I, I totally do that. So is that, is that not what she's suggesting? Yeah, change that 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 that's what she wants to do. That's fine and dandy, but we're looking at ninety thousand dollars. I've sat right here all year, and I've listened to us turn down people for thirty thousand, twenty-eight thousand, fifteen thousand. Are you willing to? Are you willing for us to shut her office completely down so she can't work at all? I don't know what to do. That's what will happen. Well, that's what will happen. I don't think that's an option. That's I didn't do this, option. Dale. It's not an option. We're stuck. I didn't do this. We are stuck. We're stuck to exactly. But I don't. We're think, stuck. I don't think that we can take it out of county general. That's what I'm saying because the statute doesn't call for that. I understand. I think yeah. that's something that Miss Cruz can get back with. Yeah, we can. We can let her check it out. So do we need to table I, this? Yeah, we're going to table it. Well, I but I think I, if I had known ahead of time, I'd be prepared. Yeah, for I, her, but I, I really think it's legal. I really do. But we're going to get her opinion on it. Well, I have a question before we do that. Um, during the budget meeting, we had discussed we were it was twenty two thousand something at that time. Twenty two or twenty five somewhere around here. Twenty two to because uh, the other paper. A buffer with forty, and then we're up to ninety. Well, that was that happens. was my question. My question was why does it say ninety? Because we were only asking. Did you did you listen to what I read? It says ninety as needed. Yeah. You're requesting forty. I understand that. We have to appropriate the money. Yes. That's but we're not going to give her a The appropriation is in the county general fund. Yeah, right. But then to move it over to the reporter's cost fund, other than the 40000 as needed. Right. And well, none of this was discussed. They just threw at us. So that's why. Well, in my other, if you remember in a budget meeting, you know, I had two ideas. I didn't know if either one would work. Maybe just cover what we're in the red right now and see if it will build itself up. But then the possibility, you know, a month down the road, we're going to be in the red a little bit again. So should we just put the 20? Should we put the 40 just to get us to the end of the year? If there's any extra bit of the year, to clean it up. And I think that was the purpose of the 90 when I talked to Pam today after why it said 90. So that concerned me because it looks a lot worse than 20 or 40 thousand. But I understand what she was, what she was saying about. Um, Setting it there, keeping it in county general, that way it's already appropriated. And if we do have to pull it, we don't have to go through all this again to get it put over there. Yeah. Did we not talk about that in the budget meeting? No, we didn't talk about the 90s. I don't think so. We talked about 40,000. 40,000. Yeah, we talked about 40,000. Yeah, no, no, no. There was an 85,000. Well, no, I think what that, where that come in is, I think Misty had a number of 72,000. No. It's what she projected that we would be under, but I didn't, she and I didn't quite agree on that little number, but 
we're okay. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. We, we figured the numbers, and there was one extra payroll that I wasn't even figuring in on that 75000 And I'm projecting just the numbers on what were in the hole, what's come in, and what's went out. And just payroll, that's if nothing else was paid out of that, we're looking at about 70000 but does that count in what we what we're no, gonna bring in? That's, that's not funny. counting anything we bring in. Okay. Because I estimated just what average a month it's been we're brought in, in, and it's around sixty eight thousand. Okay. So you have to take, you know, like she said, there may be good months that may come in, but what's come in so far, it's it's I just mean, been slow. It's been a very yeah. slow year. I mean, has. But you know, we gotta remember that forty thousand was budgeted in the first of the year. You know, so it's not like we're asking for all my payroll for the whole year plus another forty. That's not the case. So it sounds like this is gonna get tabled, but if this were passed the way it is mm -hmm. and the ninety were approved, what would be after the forty was gone, what would be the step to get it? What would be the next step? Like, okay, the forty's gone. Let's say the forty's gone. We come back and we do this. I'm trying to understand the reasoning for doing 90 instead of 40. We would decrease. You, would, you wouldn't have to pay to do another ordinance. No. You, you could do it by court order. It would just be appropriate to just be able to move it over by yes. a court order, right? Yes. Like a transfer. Kind of like a transfer, yeah. Yeah, I did talk to the auditors um, yesterday about that. And he said if we did that ordinance that we could transfer that money throughout the year for that ordinance. So as long as we have that appropriated, we can transfer it. Or does it have to go through the court board to no. be approved as it goes through? Or is not it not the court order, order, just the ordinance. I think what she's saying is by at later in the year we have to pull more from that other than the 40. Does it have to come back for the court? No, it would be done by it would be signed by them. I believe Carol Cruz has some words. Okay. Is there anything in addition to the statute that makes you think that it's illegal to transfer money from the county general into this fund? Or are you just basing it on? I'm basing it on what the, it gives specifics of what the reporter does. Those are things that the reporter does. Mm -hmm. I understand some of the reads have been done lately. But all of those monies that that, call, that, that the, the customer comes in and pays for the that goes into the reporter's cost. Sure, yeah, I understand. And that's to be used for the administration of the office. But uh, there again, it's all messed up because we don't have a payroll account. We're pulling it out of that, and that's never been able to sustain it, and it never will. But you think this statute prohibits the court from moving monies into into okay because that specifically says what that recourse the it wasn't that they had a recorder's cost fund and then they decided they're just going to do this they created the recorder's cost fund with those figures well, and over the years it's changed well it says how it can how fees end up in that account but I I don't see just on the, on the black letter law, I don't see a prohibition to move county general money. Now, I it may be contained somewhere else, which is the part I would want to double check. But if you're just basing on the statute and there's nothing in the annotations or amendments either that would prohibit them from, from y'all from moving money from, uh, certainly it doesn't seem like that's uh, maybe the design for the, for the fund, but it says gives an origin, an organic origin for that money that I don't, I mean, I, I, it seems to me that you're assuming the second part, that if we're in the situation that we're in, that the court can't move money from county general. Well, I don't see that in your statute. The, the recourse cost from was built or passed for this specific person, this for specific reason. Because clerks had payroll, and they could pay their payroll, but they didn't have any money for administration clerks yeah. in the office. 
and that's why this was set aside. Okay, but assuming, I think everyone, it sounds like everyone's agreeing with this, what the current situation is, but, but you think because this statute lays out how the money is deposited and money should be appropriated, that that would mean that the county general, no money can be moved. I don't see that in this statute, but again, I would, um, I would, you know, happy to research and my question, some other My statutes. question is, why did we do a rank with the payroll to get in this mess in the first place? Yeah, well, that's not a, a question for the county attorney. So. Are you talking about the payroll line item? Yes. Okay. She, she did away with that and, and wanted to pay everything out of the owner's cost fund, but she will not sustain it. And this has to be changed. This has to be changed at the end of the year. I make a motion that we go ahead and pay this and then let it build up and come back and pay what we have, but $90,000. If we donate 90, give $90,000, we have to apologize to Misty and Gina in the library because we shut them down. Yeah, we're not giving them $90,000. Well, that's what the government said. They're not giving it to them. And y'all can also amend yes. the amount. But that's not what we're giving them. Well, I, I would entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. I would also entertain a motion to uh, amend the ordinance or a motion to uh, table. Uh, but I don't think the table would be as prudent at this time. So, do I hear a motion? I make a motion that we talk to the legislative audit and find out what their solution is. Do you have a question? Uh, is there a second? Okay, back to discussion. One more thing. Is there any talk uh, Lindsay Bailey at the AEC? I have not. No, I have not. She'd be a good contact. Okay. Uh, Justice Taylor. Have we went through, since you took office, have we, and since we've changed this, have we went through legislative audit? Two of them. Three, four. Yeah, they, yeah we've had two audits since we've changed. And they didn't say anything? Second. 
we have a motion and a second to amend this ordinance to take $90,000 to $40,000. We will uh, we'll call vote the amendment. Second to adopt this ordinance as amended. Roll call vote. vote. Yes. Vote. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Tatum. Yes. Lemmings. Yes. Pass. No. 2019 32. Draw your name for me. Thank you for all your time. Appreciate it. Our next ordinance is sponsored by Justice Bradford. Being enacted by the court court of the county of Van Buren, state of Arkansas, and appropriate to the orders to be entitled, and appropriation orders to amend the original appropriation orders, 2019-59, the annual operating budget for 2019, to increase the projected revenue and appropriate $1,500 in the county judge's budget, 1,000-100, from the county road budget, 2,000-200. Whereas the county judge's salary was split between the county general and the county road, and whereas part of what should have been paid out of the county road budget had been paid from the county general, causing it to be short, and whereas $1,500 should be transferred and appropriated into $1,100 from $2,200. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Quorum Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that in Section 1, the following be appropriated and transferred into 1,000-100 from County Road, 2,000-200. $1,011.87 into uh, 1,008 retirement, $153.85 into number 1, and six Social Security match and three hundred thirty-four dollars and fifty-eight cents. The number one thousand and one salary will have. I move this motion be approved. This is a resolution be approved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Is there any discussion? Questions? Call vote. running down the hall right when Pam had sent the packet out. So we'll need to suspend the rules to entertain the next ordinance, which is sponsored by Mary Phillips. So at this time, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules to entertain this ordinance? I second. 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 Motion has been made in second to suspend the rules to entertain this one ordinance. Uh, roll call vote for suspension. Yes. Yes, Sarah. Yes, Phillips. Yes, Bradford. Yes, Bradford. Yes, 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 enacted by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled, an ordinance to authorize the sale of tire to Marion County, Arkansas, and to appropriate $3,600 into 2000-200-2008 uh, tires and tubes. Whereas the road department owns owns nine tires, which do not fit any equipment currently being used by county equipment, and whereas the tires are at least five years old, and whereas the tires did not sell at the recently held public auction, and whereas Marion County has a need to use the tires, 
Now therefore, be it ordained by the Quorum Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that the Van Buren County Road Department is hereby authorized to sell the following tires to Van Buren County, Arkansas. Three never driven Michelin 14 by 24 greater tires for 500 each. And six retread Unicare 14 by 24 greater tires for 350 each for a total of $3,600 to be appropriated into line item number 2000 200 uh, 2008 tires and tubes. I move we adopt this ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Any discussion? Any questions? Or before discussion? This is uh, more than just an appropriation, so uh, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules to conduct the three readings at this time. Ten a motion to suspend rules for three readings. Got to have a motion. I second. Motion's made and second to suspend the rules to conduct the next two readings by title only at this meeting. We'll call vote for suspension. Hold. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Tatum. Yes. Fleming. Yes. Fast. Yes. Thank you. Uh, please conduct the second reading of the following. Be it enacted by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled, an ordinance to authorize the sale of tires to Marion County, Arkansas, and to appropriate $3,600 into 2000-200-2008 tires and tubes. And the third and final reading. Be it enacted by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an ordinance to be entitled, an ordinance to authorize the sale of tires to Marion County, Arkansas, and to appropriate $3,600 into 2000-200-2008 tires and tubes. Thank you. Now, open discussion. Uh, these, these were just sitting in the shop, dry rotting. We tried to sell them, couldn't. Found a buyer for them. We ended up getting basically out of them what we probably paid for them about five years ago. To go buy them now, they're worth about hundred dollars more. Right now. So, I thought it was very fair. It's a good, good price. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No call vote. Hold. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Tatum. Yes. Lemmings. Yes. Bass. Yes. Two thousand nine. Next, we have a resolution sponsored by Nikki Brown. Be it resolved by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, a resolution to be entitled. A resolution authorizing the purchase of water, coffee, creamer, sweetener, cups, and napkins by the county offices. Whereas the county has historically allowed the purchase of coffee for the county offices, and where the, whereas the cost of coffee, creamer, sweetener, cups, and napkins is a very nominal expense, and whereas the expenses are approved in the annual operating budget, and whereas patrons of county offices are welcome to help themselves to these products, which fulfills a public purpose. Therefore, it be it resolved by the Quorum Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that the county clerk is hereby authorized to pay claims for the purchases of water, coffee, creamer, sweetener, cups, and napkins permitted by county offices. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to adopt this resolution. Any discussion? I would just make make sure that on this I don't have a problem with it. Just make sure that it is out for the public. Not hidden in the kitchen. Not, not hidden behind the kitchen somewhere or something. Right. The the only one uh, thing that presents an issue is the coffee pot, and we can't risk a kid pulling that thing off its coffee themselves. That's why it's behind the counter. Well, I don't That's, have a problem here. Right, right, right. 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 And that is, and you bring a very good point, and that's why this needs to be run as a resolution, because we do need to be offering that to the people who walk into the office. Any other discussion? We'll call vote. Oh, okay. yeah. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Lemmy? Yes. 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 We have one uh, transfer request 
from line item 1500 2002 small equipment to 1500 1001 salaries full time for $213 from the OEM office. This is because by uh, our personnel policy, uh, comp hours accrued over 120 may be uh, paid to the individual, and uh, that's what happened here. Gene. Do I hear a, all those it, who, uh, all in favor of approving the transfer, signify the same guy. Aye. Any against? Uh, we uh, skipped over one of our our places earlier in, well, we did, they weren't here yet. Okay. So at this time, uh, we will uh, entertain Dale Shulta, a Department of Veteran Affairs Suicide Prevention Program. So this is the first time I've ever been in a quorum court. This is just kind of blowing my mind. I'm glad you all have that job and I don't mind. Okay. But I did see something very interesting when I first walked in. I seen the agenda. I seen where you all, number one, went to order. Number two, had a word of prayer. And number three, that the way the police is in that site, you can see that people actually still care enough to take that into consideration before talking about anything. So that being said, I'll try not to take too much of your time. I don't even know if this is a proper setting for me today, so I apologize for being late, number one. Uh, any veterans in the house at all? Any veterans anywhere? Right here? Thanks for your service, sir. Right here? So, what we are facing is, um, I'm going to try to stay away from numbers. I'm going to make this quick and hopefully, okay, number one, I'm not here for any money today. I'm only here for the hearts of the people of the county of Van Buren. Um, I don't know if you know this or not. Um, Arkansas, the state of Arkansas, when it comes to suicide, this is per capita, okay? The state of Arkansas is the 10th highest nation, state in the nation for suicide. Scary, right? Van Buren County, we have 75 counties in our state. You are number 18. We are losing 22 veterans every day in our nation due to suicide. Mostly our younger veterans and then our aging veterans. The in between, they're fairly stable so they get older. So Congress passed an act called the Clay Hunt Act. And what they did is they dumped a ton of money into the VA and said something has to be done about this. Basically, what we're looking at is that this has become an epidemic amongst our veterans. It's just it's very sad that we're losing so many people so quickly for many, many different reasons. Now, I think one of the reasons why we see that the state of Arkansas is tenth in the nation is because we are an extremely rural state. Lots and lots and lots of rural veterans in the state of Arkansas, lots of little tiny hometowns. These guys, they go off, they do what they did. We send them, they go off, they come back. They may have a job, they may not. We don't know what they come back with, but we know there's a lot of stuff with PTSD, mental health sickness, drugs and alcohol, self-medicating, um, disconnecting themselves from family, friends, churches, community, <clears throat> and that's why I'm here today. All I want to do here is that, and let me say this, the VA is not in the business to run anything in your county in any way, shape, or form. What we do want is we want to go out and we're just trying to let people know that this epidemic that's going on needs some help. So we are basically begging the citizens of each county to step up and do something in some way or fashion to help veterans that may be in trouble. Now, that's a big task. Um, I put together a team called CVET, Community Veteran Engagement Team in Polk County, MENA being the central supplies hub of that county. Um, and what I did was I went around to the American Legion, the DAV, the VFWs, and every organization that you can think of that's already organized 
um, with veteran for military base. Then I went to Elks and Eagles and Lions and Rotary Clubs. Then I went to Ministerial Alliances and all those type of things. And I started to dust stuff in Polk County for approximately eight months. We threw a great big meeting in town. Um, the college gave us the facilities to use. There were no charge. The newspapers, they, they put out stuff advertised for no charge. The radios advertised for no charge. And we were able to draw 250 people to a community meeting. Had a guy in town that said, everybody barbecue for free. And we put together 15 people that are, are the board members of CVET, Community Veteran Engagement Team. Now, their job is to, is to basically go out into the camp and figure out and brainstorm and try to figure out what are some things that we can do that will draw our veterans back to their communities. So basically it works like this. When you go out, you do certain things, and you start inviting veterans to come. They may come, they may not want to come. There's lots of different things going on out there, and we understand that there's a percentage of veterans that are really not interested in anything the VA has to say. I'm okay with that. But I haven't met a person yet who doesn't have a desire to be cared for or loved by somebody somewhere or somehow. I think it's a need that we all have as people. And what we start seeing is that when we do these little events and we do things, it has a tendency to kind of draw some of our veterans that have disconnected themselves from things back to their community, and they slowly but surely begin to heal somewhat, and they get re-involved in the communities. Now, these are some highly trained individuals and all kinds of different uh, walks of life, but I say when you heal a veteran, you heal a community, you heal a community, you heal, heal a state, and that's really what we're after. Um, this is a very slow process because it just, it's, it's brand new. Nobody really knows what to do. So what the VA is doing is that I help to try to bring the team together. The reason I'm here today is just so that the people here in this county, you're the people that are running the county, I want you to know that I'm going to be out on the streets and I'm going to be out talking to people and, and asking questions and trying to get people involved. And my number one concern was that that was okay with the county. That was my number one concern. After that, then I can just go to work and we'll do whatever we can to try to put this together. I don't know, you know, I can't tell the future. I don't know how it's going to play out. And it can get a little sticky sometimes. If people have lots of different ideas about things, I'm okay with that. But what the VA will do is that as events take place in the community, so um, I'm talking to your veteran service officer. And he says he doesn't remember there ever being a veterans benefit fair in Van Buren County. Is that true? Yes or no? Does anybody know what a veterans benefit fair is? Right here. I'm not aware of one ever. Pardon? I'm not aware of one ever. Okay, so what something that we can do? So basically a veterans benefit fair, what happens is we bring every entity that the VA has to your county. We invite the mental health people, the hospital, the clinics, the first responders, the sheriff, the police, the mayors, and everybody that somebody that has, you know, that's in contact with people or veterans in any way, shape, or form, and we bring all those people here, and we we uh, advertise that we're going to do this, and then veterans start thinking, you know what, I never did file for this claim, or I didn't do this, or I didn't do that, or I'd like to talk to somebody about maybe some mental health care or even maybe seeing a different doctor or whatever the case is makes no difference what we want to do is we want to bring as many resources to the table as we can bring so that when the veterans come in that they come in and they see that people care and then each organization does what they want how they want so that's part of the job of the CVET team is to bring events and things into the community that just re-engages the veteran back to that makes sense. So that's really the only reason why I'm here tonight, because um, I just wanted to present it to you so that you understand what, why I'm here. And I'm gonna get run out of town by the sheriff. <laughs> but um, it's hard to watch people suffer, and I just feel that our veterans deserve much better. We are entering an age now when our Vietnam veterans are they're getting up there in age and we all know the story of what happened in Vietnam. And it breaks my heart to see veterans, let me put it to you like this. 
out of the 22 veterans that are committing suicide daily, only 44% of the veterans that have served in this nation or even have even signed up for benefits at the VA. So the numbers we're getting are only the numbers that we know of veterans that have signed up. That means we got another, what is it? 50 some odd, 56 percent of veterans that have not even signed a piece of paper to be entitled to what their benefits are through the VA, mental health, all of that. We have a new mission act. The new mission act says if you've been tied to the VA in the last 24 months, you're automatically grandfathered in. We also have now where we're, some people agree, some people don't, but here's the deal. Even if you're a dishonorably charged veteran, you get one year of free mental health help. Okay? So the VA is doing lots of different things to try to serve their veterans. What I'm concerned about is where are they, who are they, and what do they need, and what can this community do as a hub to make life different and bring those people back in our community. So that's basically it. Anybody have any questions about anything? Or Thank you. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Uh, we're about to run out of tape, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? Still adjourn.